Heads, and welcome to the League, exploring the League of Legends lore from A to Z. My name is Rebecca. And I'm John. My name is Mark. And today we're talking about The Fallen Morgana, who was released February 21st, 2009. One of the OGs, yeah? Kind of? Pro- at I least part so, of yeah. the cinematic, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's usually yeah. my gauge. I think we had this exact same <laughs> conversation for Kale's episode. <laughs> Kale, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although I feel bad. I was looking for the really, really old lore for Morgana to see what they had for her on original release. And man, she really got shafted. Her, her original, original stuff is just like, Kale's sister lost the wow. fight for her head judicator and is banished. It's like, oh, Kale didn't bad. even get her own shit, huh? All right. Yeah. <laughs> That's how old you are. Poor thing. Yeah. I like that Morgana's so goth looking. And her title is the name of an Evanescence album. <laughs> mm-hmm. Very good. <laughs> I mean, it's fallen. That's what they come here for, but... is the Evanescence <laughs> yeah. lore. Because I didn't know that shit. <laughs> now I'm getting, let me look it up and make sure, because I'm going to feel like a real goober. <laughs> there is an Evanescence album. <laughs> I mean, you know we're keeping it in regardless, so might as well just really? not look it up. And Are you going to edit this episode? Because I'm... I'm the one who has a say in it. Yeah, it is an album. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the one that I had. <laughs> I was gonna say it's like you don't even need to look it up, you know, you, deep in your bones. You feel it. Yeah. I did feel it. It's such a good one. <laughs> now, uh, what is what does Morgana sound like? Okay, Morgana always cracks me up because she is the most dramatic bitch ever. <laughs> I mean, she has like fifteen quotes, but they're oh, all so dramatic. She got a lot now. Oh, she does. Yeah, she got a bunch in the rework. Oh You've no! You've got the old stuff in your brain, which I also had. In my no, brain. I was. I used the the app oh, that I used, app. the soundboard, and it didn't have a lot. Oh no! Mm-hmm. All right. Well, let's. This is what old Morgana sounded like. <laughs> Share in my torment. Mm. I think she too. still sounds like that. She just got a, a lot more of that. There's just <laughs> more. Goes, of um, it. Once I had grace. Now I have pain. <laughs> uh, well, that's good. That's good. I'm a little upset you chose that one. It It is going to step on a game that I have planned for oh, a little bit no. later. Oh, shit. No. <laughs> it's fine. I've already ruined uh, one of your games, so. Uh, and actually, now I guess would be as good a time as any because we got it. We got to get guest impressions in on this that's true we do have we do have a guest sure. joining us today we are gonna make you talk the, early for okay, the okay, au okay. conversation i'm like trying to stay quiet i'm like my girl I'm like <laughs> no she's the first one she's got so many voice lines and yes she's dramatic please yeah all yeah. right give us hit us oh no so i this, guess we should say your name first yeah this is this is our friend snow who's joining us for this episode Hi, to guys. talk about morgana au's yes <laughs> But we're gonna do uh, my impression. Okay, um, I've been practicing this one, so I gotta get. I gotta oh get shit! It. shit. Oh, right. yeah. <clears throat> my sister cauterized her wound in holy fire. Mine remains. Cause she's. Ooh. That's my. So I, she's good. so dramatic. Literally, I she love is. her voice lines because every time I'm just like, okay, like I'll go off. I guess. Oh, no. Like I. I don't know. I just love how ridiculously over dramatic and emo she is <laughs> the whole, all the time uh, all the time it's all about pain and anguish and mortality and chains yeah <laughs> yeah yeah all of her quotes sound like they should be like at the bottom of like someone's photo in like 2005 on myspace now it's interesting you say that <laughs> oh. because the mini game i have planned oh, for us yes! <laughs> I've always thought that every Morgana time I'm listening. quote or our emo band quote from the 2000s. Oh, oh hell, I'm that's so excited to play that game. I'm so excited. That's such a good idea. Please, because you guys did that for the Kale one too, where it's like, is this yeah. like Kale or was it Kale wait, or least, Mass Murderer Jin? Mass- yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. They're really gonna kick my ass. This is not like I don't dabble a lot in uh, emo bands. I didn't either. And things. I'm aware of them, but yeah. Um, uh, it's weird I because I it's almost fine. feel like I want her to sound British in my head, but she's not. Like, she sounds so mm-hmm. dramatic that every time I try to be her, I sound British. But I'm like, no, she's not like a yeah. Bond villain. She's just depressed. <laughs> oh, God. She's not like a, a great Bond villain. Line, she's just depressed. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've all been there. <laughs> well, speaking of 
Cool, it's always sounding like a British accent. John, do you want to do your impression? Because I was just editing the Misfortune episode and you straight oh, up sounded British when yeah, you did Misfortune. <laughs> I am bound, but I will not break. Oh, nice. Okay. Good. Yeah, good. Good stuff. You were way better, better than I was. I don't know. No, about you were that. great. I didn't prepare, I didn't practice. I mean, you still sounded like a guy, but like, it's okay. Like, it's all right. <laughs> yeah, that's what Morgana sounds like, right? She's got that deep, rumbly bass. Yeah, you know? yeah. She's got that Texan brawl. She's always talking about sports and beer and shit, yeah. Hey, there's a reason you nailed the Graves impression, and you'll probably do well in the Twisted Fate one. Heck yeah. <laughs> you know what? You gotta take what you can get, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> All, right, All right, so what do we got for right. stories for Morgana? Morgana has a bio and two short, two short stories on the universe page. And much like Kale, she's mentioned in a ton, so I'll have like the list of the ones she's mentioned mm-hmm. in just because the quote or the term the veiled lady is used in like a million and a half mm. stories, but Yeah. Which I is weird forgetting. because yeah. the title and the bio they give her is the veiled one. But I noticed <laughs> that she got the veiled lady a lot more, right? Uh, yeah. Whatever. Mm. Yeah, I don't it's get fine. it. Um <laughs> uh, I'll be honest, I have zero notes for more. Hey. <laughs> Right. Our, our baby shower Every- tomorrow. It's been oh, like a hell of a week. <laughs> like trying to prep everything. So. Well, I don't That's have right. an excuse. I'm not pregnant. But I don't know. It rains and pours. No either. <laughs> I've got some notes. Okay. I can, well, tell, I can still tell you the bio, though. Right? Like, I know. It honestly didn't sound any different from her kale bio. I was reading I was it say, and I was we, like, we, is this just word for word? It. Um, mm-hmm. I know, it's, it, this is also by. Rayla Hyde, I'm gonna yeah. assume. I think she wrote pretty much all of everything for these characters. But, uh, all right, well, do you want me to lead the charge? In, in I believe sure. in you. Go for you, it. You can back, back me up when I, I falter. Uh, <laughs> so Morgana was a, a normal normal girl. Well, I guess it doesn't even start she there. She never was, it, right? yeah. <laughs> she was a glint in her father's eye. Because um, it starts out with her, par- with her parents uh Something and something. Me, Mira, and what's the dad's Mahiri, name? Mahiri, I think, is the mother. Mm-hmm. Or Mahira. What's the dad's name? Because it's important. These two are important Kill. characters. It begins with a K. Uh, Kronos. <laughs> Clem. <laughs> Ken. Ken. Ken and Barbie. I do have it. We're climbing Mount Targon. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll keep pressing on. So they're... Yeah, Donald so they're... Bump, bump, bump. This is like a round... Rune wars are actively happening, I want to say, or maybe immediately yeah. in the wake of it, and they realize, and they kind of come to the conclusion that we have to scale Targon, right? We got to save the world, or it's the only thing we can think to do. And they go up while she is with child, with twins, and when they're up there on the peak, uh, the, their mother Mihira is uh, <laughs> imbued with the aspect of justice, um, and that goes on for a bit. But it seems like a it kind of causes she's busy doing aspect things and kind of abdicating maybe some of her responsibilities as a dude as like a mother um and also it's just like it's a dangerous gig right you know there's <laughs> Being the <aspect laughs> there's always monsters and, and shit <laughs> eventually their dad decides to abscond with them um to a land which we know is kind of demacia before it was pr- demacia proper and as the girls are growing up whereas kale is you know studying the law and very all about i assume following the the law um, so Morgana, <laughs> um, Morgana kind of see, kind of is like, oh, it seems like you know we're starting to become a little uh, antisocial, you know, turning people away, a little kind of fear starting to kind of overtake how people are operating. And she's like, well, I'm a refugee, so I know what that's like. So that's not that's no bueno, right? And eventually, the sword of their mother just kind of shows up one day, right, and it's kind of split in twain, and both sisters take up the the weapon, even though Morgana seems to have a lot of reservations about it, because her dad is obviously freaked out by the whole thing. Her um, father, even Kylum. Oh, say what? Which we knew the whole time. Kylum? Kylum. Or, or okay. Kalam. Kalam. Or Kilam. Kill him? Kill him all. Yes, <laughs> kill him all. Yes, I remember now. Thank you. <laughs> it's K-I-L-A-M. <laughs> yeah. We're just idiots. <laughs> Pretty much. But for a while, it, it seems like even Morgana, if I remember correctly, is not super all about that aspect of life. But it comes to a head when I think they're attacked and Killam 
Kylum. Is he's like he's under threat, and so she kind of has to use her powers to protect him. And so for a while, they are both kind of the protectors of Proto Demacia, and they have very differing views on like how things should be. Kale is all about the letter of the law. Morgana is more about like the spirit of it, and maybe more like about redemptive, restorative justice versus punitive, which we get some more of in the Canticle. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> things come to like a major head when uh, one of Kale's followers, Ronus, and some of and like a group of him come to. I think they come to like arrest or kill or do something bad to Morgana. I don't remember what. And she stops him, and it's it's, it's all very vague. Uh, but she ends up killing Ronus. Now, whether it's an accident or like on purpose, eh, who knows? Morgana probably not the type to just murder somebody. <laughs> but Kale comes back, and Ronus is dead, and the shit's on fucking fire. And so the two start fighting. And um, in the middle of their big, you know, epic duel in the sky, all of a sudden, kill him is uh, he's like mortally wounded and he's down in like the ruins of, of Proto Demacia. And Morgana stops fighting and flies down to go like cradle him in her arms. Uh, and so she kind of like gives some sort of like badass like platitude one line to Kale about like, <laughs> is this justice? And, and Kale flies off to go fuck off to Mount Targon or something like that, kind of follow in her mom's footsteps. And Morgana just kind of hangs around and kind of fades into obscurity and myth and legend. And, and so Demacia, as we know it now, Kale is, you know, venerated and revered as, you know, cause they're kind of all about that. And Morgana is mostly just kind of like a, a whispered myth and legend, but she's still around. She still exists. I don't know where exactly. I don't know if she just skulks yeah. around in the shadows. She's in a cave. Something, like something. she walks around Demacia with like a Groucho Marx mask on and no one recognizes her. I mean, she still has her wings. She tried to rip them off. But she yeah, couldn't. that's true. She puts little that's mustaches true. on them too. <laughs> the eyebrows just going nuts. Got the cigar. Like, hey. <laughs> I am always very curious about these people who are just like roaming around. Like Annie, she's just like in the woods somewhere. She's one, yeah. a little girl. Two, how is she eating food? <laughs> like, and does Berries. Morgana need to eat food? Or <laughs> where, where is she? How has no one seen her? Is she? in a hole i don't know i'm very confused <laughs> apparently people know where to find her I apparently so. they, they go to her yeah. for shit yeah or they used that, to maybe but um props to their mom again by the way i think i gave him in the kale episode because i'm pregnant with one baby and i have to take a break going up the stairs <laughs> <laughs> so i don't know how she climbed mount targon targon seems hard <laughs> that's what you should call it whenever you have to go up those stairs oh, i gotta go send targon, <laughs> well, I, mean, uh, targon. I don't know how this. she did it uh but I understand yeah, why she sense. gave birth afterwards. I feel like they were a little premature, probably. <laughs> Get them out now. I'm not going back down with these two motherfuckers <laughs> inside me. <laughs> Fuck that. But yeah, anyway. I think that's mostly it, right? She's yeah. yeah. She's skulking around Demacia, and she's kind of she knows Kale will eventually come back, and is kind of preparing for that. Whatever she's going to do when Kale gets back. Yeah, they like kind of set up something here, but they set it up 14 years ago. <laughs> 13 well, years ago? Well, when was the ago? rework? Oh, I yeah, guess. Oh, okay. Yeah, more recent. So still a long ass ago. time ago. Like 2018. Yeah. So it's still a good four years ago. Mm. I would yeah. say this doesn't feel like a looming threat at all. Or like it's ever going to be picked up again. <laughs> yeah. I'm I don't know. Like, the void has been sprinkled so much that like mm. I see that coming. What the void's how, kind of infringing on Morgana's purple shit, so you can't bring her into the true. equation at all right, right now. It'd be so confusing. How how would you feel if like they unveil the new event and it's not void at all? It's Kale's return and it's just Kale and Morgana's little family. Oh spent. my god, people would be very confused. All right. Like oh yeah, I guess I forgot there. Yeah. I'm fine with it. I'm, I'm Belveth, fine with Kale's checking her, checking her little schedule. Like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> Come on. It was my turn. This was this right. is my week, guys. My week. That's all she's gonna get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm. I, I'm fine with Kale not being like a big looming threat. Like, actually, I yeah, prefer it, right because it's, it's like, hey, she doesn't drown out in the noise like Mordekaiser kind of does that we talked about. <laughs> it's a nice little. There's an interpersonal thing going on. But yeah, the fact that she's, they've got the bio and like their one stories, which are not even like about them currently, they're just kind of like ancillary about them. It's like, I don't know if Wright will ever pick this plot line up again for a while. Yeah, I feel yeah. like they, they had the conclusion to the story, but they're not allowed to do that with champions. So they're like, well, they're both still, they're both still here, guys. Don't Look worry. Out. 
They're wandering Look, around. Ooh, one day. Ooh, <laughs> one day. Maybe. <laughs> today? No. But I feel I'm like no ha- them separating was the end of that tale. You know, like they had a complete story. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to get the, the reunite on this one, I don't think. No. Yeah. I think this would actually... I was like reading through and I feel like there were parts of this that would have made for like a really like there's the there's a potential for this to be like a real like emotional compelling story too Mm. but I feel like it having to be told in like third person to make it uh you know a bio uh, really takes a lot of the hits out of it yeah I wrote down a quote here that I feel like would have been real emotional were it not told like this or if it had any dialogue (laughs) (laughs) And it was one thing. So she cradled her father, cursing their inheritance for the destruction around them. Kale landed, dumbstruck, and Morgana demanded to know if the smiting of wicked mortals included Kylum, whose crime was stealing them away from their mother. Kale gave no answer, but soared into the heavens without looking back. Imagine if there was, like, any dialogue there. It would probably be a cool moment. (laughs) It's true. I never felt like a massive connection between Kale and Morgana, so I think that's why, like, their disagreement isn't as heartbreaking as it should be. I don't know. I like Morgana, but Mm. Kale's a whatever. (laughs) They need some stories, right? They need a few stories to go through what's in this bio, because like you said, this is a a whole story, right? Give us two or three stories about this from their perspectives and you could get really good fleshed out characters, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think it's just, it's almost a shame that they've got so little of, it's weird to me almost that they've gotten so little attention. Cause I feel like they're kind of an iconic, like they're the, the, the OG sibling rivalry, right? Yeah, League, that's true. Right. Garen and Lux, you wouldn't exist without this. <laughs> yeah. They were the original siblings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like, you know, it's, it's, I don't know what the deal is. I don't know why. And I feel like there are people who, are into the lore who are invested in these these characters and have extended debates that I've read about who's right and who's wrong and etc. And it's like, you know, it's it's a shame there's not a couple extra stories to prop up all these arguments because you know people seem to connect with them. So I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. Yeah. Mm. What's the deal with Morgana? <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna move on to uh... a. <laughs> yeah, that's a good. <laughs> Fire Fire. to a crumbling shrine by (laughs) Ray (laughs) Lahai. You have to. This one, okay. I can do this one too. Um, This one's actually, it's, I like the idea that this one's kind of similar to Kale's and that it's mostly a a parable or a a story that's being told about them. Um, I don't know if it necessarily works, but we'll get to it. So it's following a kid whose name I don't remember, it doesn't matter, and he's going along with his great aunt. And they're going into the woods. And the setup is that the kid is... He's kind of pissed at his older brother. Because it sounds like his older brother... We kind of learned through the story accidentally, very likely. Gave him a shiner. Hit him right in the the face with the flat of his axe while he was showing him how to chop wood. Something along those lines. But the kid's still pissed off. And we can kind of assume... Older brother, younger brother. They probably, you know, get into spats. And uh, the great aunt notices, like, oh, you you got a plan and the kid's got like rocks in his pocket. I guess he's going to throw at his older brother or some shit. You know, classic kids childhood. Dumb plans. <laughs> this was John's childhood, by the way. I've definitely gotten stories about them throwing rocks at each other for yeah. sure. <laughs> shoot, my my yeah, brother has a whole YouTube channel other. called Toss the Brick, named after a game oh. that used to play together. <laughs> in case you're wondering, that's not a game. That's just a youth thing. <laughs> Please don't play Toss the Brick. <laughs> But uh, so the great aunt's like, I know what I'll set him straight. I'll tell you a story. They're going to a shrine, by the way, in the woods, and it's a, a crumbling statue, kind of like the, or a crumbling <laughs> the titular shrine, crumbling you know? shrine. <laughs> it's it's of Morgana, um, which we obviously we know that. But uh, the story goes that it's about um, you know back in the day, people would go to Morgana when they wanted like judgments or maybe even like punishments, things like that. And it's following an acolyte and a cleric uh, who are going to Morgana because the acolyte hit the cleric in the face with a censer. And if you're not familiar with what that is, it's like you ever seen in a Catholic mass, they got like the incense burner that kind of swings on a chain and oh. cracked him in the face with it. Um, which I love, by the way. Hilarious right. image in my head. <laughs> um, they get to Morgana and she's almost kind of like a like an old witch. She's like in a cave and she's got like a creepy potions and, and shit in her little cave stuff, which I kind of liked. And Purely she... for aesthetic reasons. She never uses those. Yeah, yeah that's my yeah. dream retirement home, honestly. <laughs> An old witch cave? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dope. I'm liking it. But uh, Morgana does come out, and she's like, yeah, you did hit this guy in the face, 
but what's the reason? And she kind of peels, she's like through, I don't know, justice aspect powers, is able to kind of intuit that the reason he hit the cleric in the face was because the cleric is like a, a massive prick who punishes all of the various acolytes by like physically like, you know, physically abusing them, things like that, corporal punishment. And he was doing it to stop him from hurting another acolyte. And so she instead inflicts punishment on the cleric and kind of forces him to endure like the experience almost of what he's been doing to the other acolytes. And after that, it seems to have seems to have fixed his shit because after that, it seems like he is genteel and, and, you know, kind and stuff like he's he's got a taste of his own medicine pretty much. And then the great aunt is like, well, the moral of this story um, is that revenge is a selfish thing and you shouldn't really teach someone a lesson unless it's like a lesson they can learn and grow from. And also your older brother probably didn't mean to hit you. He was <laughs> helping you learn how to chop wood and he did apologize immediately after. And the kid's like, okay, I won't throw rocks at him, I guess. And they leave the shrine. <laughs> right? That's, that's mostly it. Oh, Am I right? Yeah. yeah. Man. I feel like the Catholic Church could use so many more Ghanas. <laughs> <laughs> Put a Morgana in every Catholic yeah. church. <laughs> uh, I wrote a quote here. Uh, and her expression John was... John grew up Catholic, by the way. He's allowed to say that. Yeah. My dad's a deacon. It's cool. <laughs> uh, and her expression was spiteful, as if she was about to spit out sour milk. Ew. Which we know from the Lux episode, that's magic. That's the taste of magic mm, right mm, there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that's intentional, or do you think that was just a, a writing choice? I think it was a writing if choice. You had to, <laughs> I like it. If you had to endure the taste of sour milk every time you did magic. It would depend on the magic, for sure. <laughs> I guess that's fair. Milk if magic I could, like, definitely conjure, that like, <laughs> tiny magic. sparks or something, like, probably not worth it. Mm. But I like, I like it as a world-building detail. I would like to see that carried through. You know, it's like it's it's like something, right? It's like oh, doing magic. Maybe you get different tastes. Like mm, this tastes like, I don't know, like <laughs> pennies. You know, that kind of coppery <laughs> kind of taste. You know? <laughs> when you're doing like hemomancy, yeah. Ooh, mm -hmm. that was going. Could someone get really lucky and they're like, oh my god, I taste brownies every time. <laughs> <laughs> Do magic. You guys are eating pennies and sour milk. I'm so sorry. Maybe that's, that's why she's trying to be a baker. It's because it, mm. <laughs> oh, god damn it. <laughs> That is my yeah. favorite splash art, by the way. The old one, not the new one, but mm. the uh, the baker, the baker Morgana one. I don't remember what it's called. Sinful succulent. Sinful succulent. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you'll like the it. Journal of Justice, and then you'll hate the Journal of Justice. But <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, but about anyway. this one, I feel like I have some of the same issues that I had with the Kale one, which is that like, I feel like the moral of the story doesn't really necessarily yes. reflect <laughs> yes. what. <laughs> She's, she's telling the kid it means. I agree. She she's telling she's te telling this story about getting revenge in a satisfying way, and then saying revenge is no good. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's because in the story the priest was out to get revenge on the acolyte, and then I had the it, tables yeah. turned on him. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I don't feel like the boy. It, it was just a. It wasn't a one to one. For no. Sure. <laughs> I think that. I think like. There's a couple. There's a couple things I have with it. One is that Morgana's whole thing is supposed to be about like forgiving people and like seeing, like trying to take in all the context of what's happening, right? Yeah, it's and true. I, I I wish I almost wish that instead of just like saying like, ah, oh, this cleric's the real asshole, I'll punish him. Like she sees why the acolyte did like hit him with the censor, which is still fucking hilarious, um, and <laughs> then takes it a step further and sees why the cleric does what he does, and maybe he suffered the same abuse as like a child like when he was an acolyte right and no one gets punished and it's just about like understanding why people do things and forgiving them even if they're like mm. yeah they've done bad things but you know things like that right things that are more yeah. like on the forgiveness side and the point yeah. of it would be like you know understand why people do things and why they make mistakes and things like that right yeah because that's i mean that's how you end cycles of abuse exactly, is exactly. figuring out where it came from but she just went ahead and punished and abused the cleric again. Well, mm. continuing it, the cycle of abuse. I think it does specifically say that the only thing she did to him was make him feel what he had done to other people. Yeah. Like sure. force, 
the most forceful application of empathy. <laughs> in, yeah, sure, in that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> I would be fine with like a maybe like there's a middle ground between like those two things. Yeah. I just think it's. I would like because if you're trying to <clears throat> excuse me emphasize more the difference between her and Kale, like oh. Who, Having her be someone who didn't punish anyone at all in the story is very different from how Kale would have orchestrated that whole whole thing. The other thing, and this is like just more broadly, is that when you're telling like a fable, like like you know, like a tale that's supposed to be like a morality play, I feel like you should be able to like when the story ends, you should know exactly what the message is, right? Like, oh, that gra- that fox couldn't get those grapes, and that's why he's calling them sour. <laughs> like, you understand immediately what's happening, what's ha- like what, what the message is. I don't know. I, I went to set the sour grapes fable. That was the one I went to. <laughs> sure. I don't know. But with this one, I'm like, okay, I can see, like, I can kind of see what this might, the message might be here. But I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Mm. Nah. Yeah. It's, now, I mean, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now she's also in Canticle of the Winged Sisters by Graham McNeil. Which is, uh, you know, basically the story of Kale and Morgana, where we get a few more details about their their life and relationship that we don't necessarily learn outside the bio. Like we learn about the whole like attack on the city, and and Kale went to fight, and Morgana protected the city, and then Kale was like, "Where were you?" And Morgana was like, "I was doing shit over here." And they were like, "Ma, <laughs> ma, ma!" Oh, now okay. they're mad. So that's yeah. the synopsis of that story. That was great, honey. <laughs> well done. <laughs> I mean, you're right. It was right? 4,000 words. the same no. story we've heard. <laughs> they do this sometimes where they're like, here's a bio. Now here's the bio in poem form. <laughs> yeah. mm. Thanks. Uh, yeah. uh, I was upset that... So I have I have notes like as I was reading the story. So sometimes I'll say something and then I'll get to a point later in the poem where I'm like, all right, well, that just undercut one of my original notes but i never go back and change my notes so i'm just gonna go down the list great <laughs> no, yeah, I, like <laughs> uh, I was upset that kale sword got a sweet name like the blade of justice and morgana's got nothing so then i started brainstorming names that morgana's sword could be okay okay the blade of injustice i got the dark dirk the dark dirk <laughs> i got the purple poker <laughs> The Dark Dark Diggler, is that where uh, your mind's at? I feel like the Purple Poker is definitely the name of a dildo. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I got the Eggplant Epe. <laughs> All right, well. <laughs> and the Sangria Saber. Oh, I like that one. The Especially aubergine. if it also gives her some sangria. <laughs> now, what would what would you guys name? Like, uh, <laughs> That's not fair, you've around. had time to brainstorm. <laughs> I was supposed to say uh, aubergine. There's there's something there, but I don't know what the next word is. It would be called like I write sins, not tragedies. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck out of here. I think emo song titles would be perfect. That's Any one true. of them. <laughs> cute without misery the e. business or something. Oh, cute without, like without the e. Cute without the e. Is it? <laughs> Cut from the T. That, that good. <laughs> Uh, anyway, Mark, did you have one? No, I you're, you're <laughs> blew all mine out the fucking water. <laughs> I got nothing. But you know what um, I like about that is it raises an interesting point, which is like, I would be interested to see what Morgana thinks of that sword. That would be a color story. Is just her with like this dusty old sword, and because she doesn't have one in game or anything, right? No, so she certainly doesn't use it. And what Where are all her powers? Sword? Well, she tossed it away. <laughs> okay, um, and I think. Kale actually has it now because mm. Morgana does have an interaction with Kale that's like, right. mm, my sword. Hmm. Uh, okay. <laughs> Shit. Getting my sword to be cool. I have dirt that bubbles. <laughs> 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 that you could don't walk over it. No. <laughs> <laughs> I got these chains, dog. That's funny. Uh, <laughs> uh, Kale has a quote in this. I mentioned that when Kale was fighting, Morgana was helping the townsfolk, and Kale took that personally. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when Kale was in trouble, this is what she said Sister Fair, I am sore beset. Which, like, yeah, maybe she just didn't know that you you needed help. Maybe <laughs> just say help next time. That's a real fucking weird way to say help. <laughs> 
Although I do petition that all of my siblings, if any of you are listening to this, could you please refer to me as Brother Fair <laughs> from now on? Uh, so that's what she you hear in Ren Fair. <laughs> right? <laughs> Next Ren Fair, we'll go around quoting this shit. I am so beset. <laughs> <laughs> and then she said, you know, huzzah to the glorious tipper. <laughs> Well struck, my lord. <laughs> Yo, you're making me miss Ren Fair. <laughs> uh, yeah. There was one line in this that I feel like I missed last time, because, you know, we went over this for Kale, too, but uh, when Targon's beacon shines anew and night falls on the world, look to the, look to the south on that day and pray for all Demacia, which is kind of the, it's, it's predicting the return of Kale. And it seems like even the Demacians know they're fucked when Kale comes back. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I kind of thought that maybe they they were under the impression like, oh no, we're doing good. She's gonna be she's gonna be all all with us when she comes back." But I mean, she might like, be. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it's, it's like, like even they're like, like, "Ooh, I may she might not be cool with what we're doing." <laughs> look busy. Kale's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, <laughs> start <Maybe>. cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's like Anivia, where it just signals like a horrible cataclysmic event. It's like Anivia is great, but if she shows up, that means bad fucking times is coming. That type <laughs> Poor of Anivia. Thing, you know? Everyone's always so disappointed to see her every like four hundred years. <laughs> right. I brought chips. Uh, okay, I guess no more. <laughs> Our last fine. meal. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Now these are the stories she's mentioned in. Okay. Okay. Uh, for Demacia. <laughs> Where Luck says, may the Veiled One welcome you to her breast, which she said to when they passed Aldo Dayan's burial procession. And in case you forgot, he's the dude who murdered his neighbors under the influence of Nocturne's scary nightmare juice. Mm. Oh, right. <laughs> Nocturne's scary nightmare juice. <laughs> yep, yep. That's the name of his energy drink. <laughs> One of those really? 99 cent ones you get at like the dollar store or whatever. Oh my god, Ryan, Brand. please make an energy drink <laughs> called Nocturne's Scary Nightmare Juice. That's well, a pre workout, is what free. that is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in Fragile Legacies, when Jarvin was speaking of Sona's dad at his funeral, he said, So I swear by the swords of the winged protectors that I will hold responsible those who took him from me. Uh, in Last Light, when Lux is visiting the injured the soldier and asks how long he had, the doctor says, only the gods know, but his time is short. If you would stay at his side, it would ease his passing into the arms of the veiled lady. It seems like at this point... What do they think Morgana does? <laughs> she's kind of like this, This, uh, uh, I guess, like just people who lead you into death. Yeah. This is, like this a, is Demacia's version of, like, Ari from sure, the yeah, Scare Blossom a... Ari. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. God, imagine. She's so terrifying looking if she looks like that. <laughs> like, that's what you see when you die. And you're like, oh, fuck, I messed up. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. But she comes Here's with your cookies. Mascara and like, and oh, okay. album. <laughs> but she burnt the cookies. <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh. Now, uh, Lux issue two, Lux brings Silas a copy of a book called Tales of the Veiled Lady, which is supposedly about a spooky old witch who haunts Demacia. Why do they think Morgana is? <laughs> this is so confusing. Uh, yeah. Oh. And then in Lux issue four, Silas uses the Kaelin Morgana magic, which was stored in the petrocyte of Demacia, to wreck some folks. Hmm. Yeah. That's hmm. neat. Uh, that is annoying. That's interesting. And Shadow and Fortune... Lucian says he would shut the grief away until Thresh was destroyed and Senna's death avenged. Then and only then would Lucian mourn his lost wife with tears and offerings to the Veiled Lady. Okay. It must be like a Hades type situation. That's kind of like what I'm thinking. someone who tends the dead. Mm. Yeah. And then finally, she's in the Kale bio, obviously. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. <laughs> Couldn't be. Then who? Morgan. <laughs> Sorry, I got no. cookies on the brain oh, you now. You really got cookies on the brain now. <laughs> I'm gonna pause real quick while John goes get some some cookies. Yeah. <laughs> so that's uh that's Canon Morgana. Mm-hmm. There's not much yeah. here, especially for how old she is. But 
Yeah. Yeah, certainly underwritten. I think, I don't know if you're going to hit some of it in the fun facts, but I like some <laughs> of the interactions they have. she has with Kale in their in-game quotes. And I just, I would just, I wish we had some more, you know, I wish we had some, some nice lore to kind of give us more insight into them as sisters who like each other and then kind of what, what they're up to now, you know. Yeah. And she is, she's just chilling in a cave somewhere. I want more heartbreak with it, you know. We yeah. get a lot with Garen and Lux. There's a lot of emotion there. Yeah. And I would say if you ask League players who don't really follow the lore to name siblings, I don't think they would name Kale and Morgana. They probably don't know that they're siblings. Oh, you think so? <laughs> hmm. I don't I didn't for the longest time. I knew that Lux and Garen were, I knew that Draven and Darius were, without even looking at the lore. I had absorbed that information, but... <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. I feel like the bio is the Cliff Notes version of what could be, like, a really cool, you know, compelling story, so I'd love oh, to yeah. see that at that some could point. be a whole novel, is starting with the parents, and then... Yeah. I'd read it. Mm-hmm. You heard her. Lene, get on it. <laughs> right. Emails, <laughs> Lene. <laughs> Sideline ruination. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, All right. Old lore? I've got some old lore. Mm. Y'all want some old lore? Yes. I, I want some old lore. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you needed to reassure yourself. Like, you, you all want the old lore, right? Right. I have it. I have notes. It's good. Is it weird. good? <laughs> um... So there was a world far away where an ancient conflict raged, and like so many wars, this conflict split families. One side called themselves angels, claiming to be beings of perfect order and justice, and then those that fought against them believed the angels to be tyrants. Uh, Morgana, obviously, fought against what she perceived as the tyranny of the angels, and for that she was branded fallen. Uh, Morgana took... Uh, Morgana was not innocent, having taken to the practice of black arts in an effort to fight against the general of the enemy's army, her sister Kale, mm -hmm. uh, who had long disavowed any filial connection. Uh, then as the two were locked in what might be their final conflict, they were suddenly summoned to Valoran. Morgana now fights in the League of Legends, <laughs> but only with the goal of destroying her sister before returning home for snacks. <laughs> I Which doesn't make any <laughs> makes no sense because you're never ever ever gonna kill her in the League of Legends. That's the right. whole point, right? Revive That's with still true. a summoner spell I <laughs> at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Get fucked, Morgana. Uh, you know what's funny about old bios is because um, there's another wiki that I've started looking at for old bios because it captures ooh. like every in iteration of them. And the bio that she had after the Institute of War was gone, but before anyone got significant rewrites uh was 71 words long and i was like holy shit oh damn found one <laughs> um doesn't mention kale at all by the way too in that, in that one so <laughs> you know they weren't very sure temporary what they were gonna do well, there yeah. this was by the way back back in the day when she was fairly new she was still referred to as morgan lur or like morgan la Oh, like like as a clear oh, like Morgan like Lefay type thing, but they didn't. They never pulled the trigger on like Morgan Lefay. It was always just like Morgan La. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> I saw on the wiki that in Dev, like she used to have a last name, and like Hex was one of them or something like that. Mm. They, it seems like the the witch thing because like it mentions dark arts in almost every iteration of her bio. She's a practitioner of dark, you know, magics and shit. Like it seems like that's some some sort of imagery that they wanted but never really never coalesced for her because I never see her as like a witch or anything like that you know in game even except in her AUs <laughs> sure I mean frankly it seems like the coven stuff is like that's the way to do it for her but yeah her title doesn't make any sense anymore either I keep thinking about the fallen like why isn't she the veiled lady or the veiled one because she doesn't know. wear a veil in game <laughs> Because she, cause Cause she, she doesn't chained, fall down either. She chained her wings, and now she can't fly anymore. She's constantly tripping over her dress. <laughs> she had the lowest move speed in the game. <laughs> well, they put the, the skirt so low on her dang hip bones, so it makes mm. sense that she's tripping over it. It's actually supposed to be up on the shoulders. It just... 
<laughs> she just <laughs> wants to put it like 12 inches under her belly button. Her ass is hanging out in the back in that splash art. That's all I'm saying. That's how low that skirt is. <laughs> anyway. She also shows up in a bunch of Journal of Justice articles. Okay. First one being issue two, Morgana, the fallen baker. <laughs> We learn about Morgana's bakery, sinful succulents. And her quote from this article is that uh, I've spent a great deal of time refining the recipes I remember from my homeland, as well as mastering the ones I've learned here. While I may be focused on freeing my people from the tyranny wrought by the likes of my expletive sister, Kale. Oh, shit. There's always room for pie. Oh, <laughs> she's right. There's always room for pie. I'd, I'd work at her bakery. She burns a lot. That's yeah. okay. That would make me look like Noxus? a better baker. Hmm? Oh, so yeah, it wasn't Because was yeah, yeah. Yeah. that's where Down evil things Noxus. go. Or wind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then she shows up in issue 10 a couple times. Uh, the first one is the mailbag of justice. Beautiful, huh? Where someone asks, like, hey, if certain characters hate each other, why do they work together? Take Kale and Morgana. Wasn't Kale's existence in the League just to kill Morgana? Why do I see these people <laughs> making great lane partners together if they want to kill each other? Why isn't there a debuff placed on characters with grudges? Is it because they're getting paid so much to not care or what? <laughs> and uh, the summoner says, uh, they must surrender their right to refuse the call of a summoner for any reason. In the cases of Kale and Morgana, they were willing to temporarily put aside their grudge to join the League, though summoners often comment on being mentally affected by the seething anger between these two when they're forced to fight on the same side. Though we cannot alter the feelings of the champions we recruit, it's my suspicion that certain fighters take advantage of the situation by honing their skills on the battlefield, although there is certainly the danger that a champion will wreak havoc after gaining immense strength during their experiences on the fields of justice. It's a risk the League is willing to take. All right, so we're going to play Morgana Kale bot lane. And if it goes badly, we'll be like, they just hate each other so much. They're yeah. not listening to me. Yeah, I couldn't. <laughs> Man, it hurt. The, the seething anger hurt me physically. Hurt trying to. Time. <laughs> I like that excuse. Uh. Um, and then someone else wrote in and said, I can't help but notice that all new additions to the league seem to be applying to get into the league. Does the league have enough champions that it no longer needs to pluck the unwilling and unsuspecting, <laughs> such as Anivia, Morgana, and Kale? Or is there another reason the league stopped snatching champions off their home worlds? Oh my god. Uh, and their answer was, uh, when the league was small, the city-states didn't trust it because they didn't know what it was, so they didn't want to offer up any of their champions. So the league had to get creative in their <laughs> recruitment. And it wasn't until they summoned Morgana and Kale followed trying to hunt her down that they were like, hmm, maybe this isn't a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, next up, issue 12, Victory for Ionia. Uh, this is the recap of the match. Um, that, you mm. know, freed Ionia. We find out that Morgana, who is controlled by the summoner Vorath, and Singed, laned against Amumu and Soraka, bot lane. <laughs> oh, let's recreate what that. What a time to be alive. <laughs> yeah, do that League, bot lane. League was a whole different game back in the day, y'all. <laughs> Remember when Morgana was exclusively mid? I remember that. Look, I'm just saying, could you imagine you're a regular-ass Ionian, you've been under the boot heel of Noxus for however many years, and you see your bot lane, it's like, oh no, Soraka, Mumu, great. <laughs> I gotta rely on these assholes. Cool. Guess we'll I mean, just I guess be... it worked, man, whatever. It'll be another yeah. 50 years till we can ask for a rematch, I guess. Thanks, Disco Nunu, thanks. <laughs> Yo, Soraka <laughs> used to be able to give people mana, so I get why that worked. Sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah, I get it. I get it. It's just funny. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> now, this issue also has uh, Morgana starring on the cover of a swimsuit edition oh. of Sports Exposed, <laughs> is the name of the <laughs> magazine. And uh, a little quote from her for this article. As I expose myself, oh. I will expose the truth. By showing my scars from war, I show the history of my people. The judicator lies. The tyrants that rule my world will enslave all that is within their grasp. It is only a matter of time before they spill out here into Valoran. If this is the way to get my message out, then so be it. 
And <laughs> it said that the reporter then said, uh, Morgana's words have moved me in a way this reporter would originally have found impossible, all while wearing something sheer and purple while smelling of tanning oil. Wow. The tanning oil is what's what got me on that one. Yeah. On that I bet one. they just photoshopped all the scars out anyway in the, <laughs> on the issue. I love hearing the excuses that like these guy guys in the gaming industry come up with for like putting their characters in scantily clad outfits. Oh she uh, uh that's how she breathes. She breathes she, she absorbs uh, that, water yep, through skin. That's, that's why I like Yoko Taro. Now. Because he just says, I like pretty girls, <laughs> and he just <laughs> owns it. <laughs> oh, oh, man. God. But yeah. <laughs> the, uh, I don't have anything to add. It's like I said, you'll love the j- journal, and then you'll hate it. <laughs> you were right. The very last issue she shows up in is 23, uh, after Kale's found to be the victim of a withering curse, which was making her weak, which, as we talked about, was probably just an excuse to an in-game excuse to like give her a huge rework and buffs uh morgana was found to be the lead suspect but she denied all involvement so we're cool uh, okay she yeah. denied it you can't yeah. you know that's it wasn't her <laughs> <laughs> all right so we got a few cinematics mm-hmm. and then time for the quote game after that <laughs> uh first of all make history uh, she's on the screen when the announcer's all like, victors bind their enemies in darkness. And you see a picture of Morgana. So that's good stuff right there. That's so good. That's content. And then, uh... <laughs> that's what I call content. Uh, and then welcome to the League of Legends. Uh, one of those first cinematics, it opens with Morgana blasting Kale with something that looks like a dark binding, but doesn't stun her for 10 years. Uh, <laughs> so I know it can't be that. And Nasa sneaks up behind Kale and whacks her with a stick, to which the summoner, who's controlling Kale, reacts as if he had just been hit, which raises some interesting questions about the nature of the connections between summoners <laughs> and champions. It should never happen when I played, man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right before Nasus finishes her off, though, Rai shows up, Rune Prism's Nasus, cues Morgana off screen, and then, I mean, she decides not to black shield herself for some reason. Listen, and some of us are up. slow <laughs> the seething, on the black shield. <laughs> the seething anger, it just, you know, <laughs> fucked up the connection. Yeah, and she shows up in the final freeze frame. Uh, speaking of final freeze frames, in the season one blooper reel, She's in the final freeze frame. Oh, wow. Thanks. But oh. also, at the very beginning, mm-hmm. her wing pops up. Mm. You can see her wing. Wow. And then John. right after her wing pops up, Earth's fin pops up, holding a little mm. spatula. All right, I'll yeah. give you that one. That's fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then in the season two blooper reel. Oh, God. You uh, see her pinky. <laughs> One of the summoners controlling Kale sneezes and drops the little energy ball, I guess. I don't know what the balls are. Uh, Which causes Kale to spin through the air right as Morgana fires the shot at her and she inadvertently dodges. Wow. It's a pretty funny Mm. moment. (laughs) And she shows up in the final freeze frame. It's a knee slapper, I want to tell you. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right quote time yay actually real quick real quick Uh this is also related to quotes okay i have a few quotes that i wanted to just call out first because they're cool uh to see the world in black and white is to blind yourself to all life's colors it's fucking bars (laughs) (laughs) uh also you mentioned renfair earlier Mm -hmm. uh one of her quotes legit reminds me of one of our character tag lines from the Connecticut Renaissance Fair is oh. great. So she says, uh, when she encounters Garen, those who wear armor fear death, Garen. And that's a lot of armor. Ooh. Our, uh, we had a guy in Renfair who was playing Percival, and his tagline that he used to like get himself into character in the morning was, uh, I don't wear armor, because armor implies that one intends on getting hit. Cool. 
I'm sure that's what Connecticut they were referencing Carolina. specifically. Yeah, I think they were yeah. referencing the Connecticut <laughs> Renaissance Fair. Yeah. They had like the backstage. <laughs> he didn't even have that line in the Ren Fair. He just used it to get into character. <laughs> I like it. All right. Now it is time to play. What <clears throat> was you okay, name the game? No, I didn't. <laughs> come up with one right now. I didn't come up with it. Uh, oh, God. Um, name now. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to steal your song title. I write. Sinful succulents, not tragedies. Okay. Ooh, nice. Uh, I write succulents, not tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that sounds like she's writing about the plant succulents. <laughs> right? <laughs> all right. I'm going to read you a quote. Mm -hmm. I want you all to guess Is this a Morgana quote or is this a quote from an emo band? Sure. I'm assuming these are all early 2000s emo bands because that's much. John's jam. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, my broken heart still beats. That's Morgana. That's Morgana. Morgana. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I, I, I'll follow along with the crowd. Could be I'll both, say Morgana. But I'm definitely Morgana. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, both would be a really good one. Oh, I'll shit. go with Morgana. Oh, God. I wish I had found some that were both. <laughs> I bet I could have. I didn't think of it. <laughs> mm. That would have been hard. You guys are right. That is Morgana. Yeah. I, I play Morgana sometimes, so I'm a little, I feel like okay. I have a slight edge. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be tough. You'll have to guess last then. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I, that one, I just, I happen to remember Morgana mm -hmm. saying it. I am a hostage to my own humanity. That is not Morgana. <sighs> I'm going to say e emo band. I'll be, I'll be different. I'll say emo band, too. That is an emo band. That oh, is Reliant K, Be My Escape. <laughs> I Wait, I love that song. I'm... Yeah, I, I was feel listening like to it yesterday. Song. Please, you got a couple <laughs> ringers in here. This is bullshit. I don't play Morgana, and I don't listen to this. Uh oh, I don't listen to emo music either. Please, now you all know why I play Morgana. <laughs> <laughs> I know you well enough to know you never loved me. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say emo, emo band. band. emo band that is an emo band <gasps> in fact that is from cute without the e oh uh, well, hell yeah <laughs> I, I wouldn't have done that Sunday. i know a few emo band titles or song titles <laughs> i'm gonna go ahead and remove the once i had grace now i have pain mm, sorry. <laughs> i'm gonna be sorry. honest I, I had already forgotten that marks <laughs> <laughs> nothing makes you feel alive it's more like knowing you might die <laughs> It's more good. Man, you didn't even finish. Because I, I almost picked, I almost picked that one. <laughs> okay, well okay. we know that's Morgana, then I guess. <laughs> I say emo band. <laughs> that is an emo band, Mark. You. <laughs> <laughs> that is Morgana. Dude, she has such an obsession with mortality. Like she, that's the whole thing. Though, is she wishes she was dead. She tried to cut off her wings. She tried to like do all uh, these things. She just can't yeah. die, and so she's salty that she's still alive and likes to be a ba make a big deal out of it. I'm just too all good at living, you know? Pain. There's just pain all the time. Like, if I can't be dead, I'm just going to remind myself I'm alive. So pain, anguish, endure. Like, that's it. That's the vibe. Uh, she would vibe super hard with old Maokai, who also does not want to be alive. Or Aatrox. Right. She would True. vibe with Aatrox now, frankly. I, she 100% would have an emo Spotify playlist. Like, I'm surprised they haven't done, like, playlists League, right, and like <laughs> playlists of like what champs would listen to on on the daily. Ah, oh, that'd be so Cause... great. Mm -hmm. I like that idea. Mm. All right, <clears throat> which one of us will burn in the end? I think that's. I'm gonna say one. I'm gonna say emo band. That's that's my guess. Oh no. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I don't know this one. This could go either way. I'll like say emo that, I band. I feel like that's a quote to Kale. It might be. I'm going to go Morgana. I'm so scared right now. We got our first split decision. <laughs> this one is an emo band. No! This, this is newfound glory all downhill from here. Oh. <laughs> Man, newfound glory. God I damn, hope I someone makes a playlist a of all these songs you're referencing. Right. I know, I forgot about newfound glory. <laughs> she does have a lot of quotes like that with kale though like one that always cracks me up is kale's little healing thing is like purification or whatnot and 
every time you use it on Morgana, Morgana will be like, oh, am I not pure enough for you, sister? Like, dude, just accept the healing and call it a day. <laughs> Could you imagine Funny you know nothing about the lore and you're like, oh, damn, bitch, I'm just trying to help. Right? I know, exactly. I cool know the lore and I'm still seconds, like, Morgana. Chill. You're on the same team. <laughs> I black shield myself every time she tries to heal me. <laughs> I'm going to poison myself just to offset it. <laughs> Y'all should do that bot lane then. It'd be great. I just do. Me, okay, sisters. listen. Me and, me and my brother like the lore and we'd be toxic and we do that. Like KLADC, Ghana <laughs> support. It kind of works, yeah. but you have to be good at the click characters and I'm only good. Morgana is the only champ I have an M7 on. Everything else is like kill, kills up there, but still, it's not very uh, viable. It's just funny. I, I, don't play Kale. John yeah. would have to play Kale. I mean, if any strategy for any champion involves being good at them, that's a hard stop for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that, well, hang on. That does not stop us. <laughs> Let's be clear. She's okay. like, speak for we'll still yourself, try it. buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got three more here. Okay. 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 Good luck. Thank you. I mean, some of these you'll probably know if you're familiar I with. I don't know. I play um, an A-Ram. I don't know. <laughs> betrayal never comes from your enemies. Morgana. I like Morgana on that That's one. Morgana. I feel like Morgana on that one, too. That is Morgana. Yeah, Dude, that's such a good quote, though, because it just goes, <laughs> yeah. goes so deep into the idea that betrayal only like makes sense if you care. Like You don't care about people that like betray yeah. you if you don't care about them. And then, like... Oh, betrayal never comes. I'm gonna use that in real life. I've actually used some Morgana <laughs> quotes in real life, and no one's caught it. And they're like, "Wow, like that's kind of deep." Like, Damn. Okay. <laughs> Your light will fizzle out without hope. I feel like this feels. Like I'm gonna a trick. say I'm an saying emo, emo band. band. Unless this is what a is quote Rebecca saying? Because I'm like heavily. I said emo band. I'm not sure. I just can't imagine Morgana saying the word hope. <laughs> I want to hear her say fizzle. Well, <laughs> wait, what's the quote again? Can we repeat the quote? Ahem. Your light will fizzle out without hope. It's Morgana. It's Morgana. This is a quote to Lux. I'm still saying emo band, though. <laughs> this is emo band. What the oh, heck? Yeah. <laughs> This is the AFI song, Miss Murder. You oh, were really? naming so many huh. songs I've never Bro, heard of. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to have to go back because I feel like she has a quote that is super similar to that because it's talking, <laughs> she talks to Kale about how Kale's whole thing is like justice and I'm the light, but in reality it just brings darkness to everyone else because I just freaking kill everybody. And then Morgana <laughs> literally has a quote to her calling her on that, like, yeah, like your way of doing things is not gonna be very happy in the end so that's what it was reminding me of um, i'm gonna have to go find it now mm, i'm very sad right. <laughs> it was it was t i was tr i was hoping to find more that of the two of them talking to each other but they refer to themselves as sisters so much in yeah. their oh, quotes yeah. it made it tough yeah, <laughs> yeah i saw cut that. that one out but yeah and then the last one we've got only those you love can break your heart i think that's, <sighs> that's i think that's emo morgana band. emo band I'm gonna say Morgana. You know, it's so similar to the betrayal one. I know. I'll say Morgana. That one is Morgana. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, to be fair, I was looking at quotes like earlier today, and that one did I did remember. So that's that's maybe a cheat. I don't know. So you guys okay. did you guys did pretty good. Yeah. I like this no, one. I thought though. he was definitely trying to like <laughs> trick us with the whole like, oh, we just went did one that's similar to that, so it's either like <laughs> definitely gonna trigger the morgana vibe but whatever um. yeah i like it <laughs> nice you guys got I done like good that. thank you you guys got most of them right thanks for thanks for proctoring it yeah no problem <laughs> i'm glad we didn't ruin this one for you like i ruined your last game <laughs> i like i had put a note to myself like if you want to know what morgana sounds like in game just imagine like any emo band from the 2000s <sighs> and then like a female voice and i was like I wonder how true that is. I'm going to look up some email quotes. Mm. <laughs> yeah. That's, no, uh, I like it. That's pretty spot on. <laughs> yeah. Well, that moves us in to the guest segment <laughs> where we're going to be officially re-welcoming our guests. <laughs> <to the fray. laughs> well, we did for the game. Yeah. Uh, so, so, Snow, 
tell us a little bit about why specifically Morgana and why specifically the AUs? Um, so I'm super into, well, my favorite color is purple and I have a bit more of an emo <laughs> vibe about my personality. And so when I saw there was a winged purple emo lady as an option, <laughs> I was like, that's the one for me. Also, <laughs> I'm really into like uh, the King Arthur Merlin type lore stuff. And her name's Morgana. And like in the, in the BBC one they did with like Colin, oh, what's his face and whatever, like the girl katie mcgrath who played morgana like as a child i looked up to her i wanted to be her she was so hot so beautiful and so like <laughs> i get to be morgana now it's kind of like a full circle moment for me um also like i'm just i i'm comfortable in the support place and my friend picked her told me like oh yeah you'd like her she'd be good for you and so then i just never stopped playing her and i do <laughs> love the lore the fact that she's like a sister i feel like i'm not I don't, it's not a stretch to play Kale because I play Morgana. So it's kind of like if I want to go bot lane, I do Morgana. If I want to go top lane and be by myself, then I be Kale. <laughs> and I say this all the time that I'm Morgana and Kale me because I feel like between the two of them, they're like two halves of my personality. Some days I'm feeling Morgana, some days I'm feeling <laughs> Kale. Like it just depends on the mood. So I feel like it's very appropriate for just. Um, how I am and I love the fact that when I first saw her as a character I legit thought like stereotyped her hardcore like oh there's the evil sister and there's the good sister and of course Kale is yeah. so in light and her splash art so I'm like oh she must be the good guy and then Morgana is like the bad guy and then like I looked up the lore and I remember going to my brother and being like this is so cool because <laughs> it's not like that Kale is like this over righteous crazy hard justice but they're both aspects of justice quite literally and but it's just a different way of looking at them but I almost kind of love that they it's almost as if the way that we see them is how they see themselves. So Morgana sees herself as like this fallen, like, I can't believe I'm like this. I hate myself. I'd rather be dead. I wish I could be mortal. Like, I don't like the injustice and the justice that we're carrying out, like this kind of thing. And then Kale just sees herself as like this perfect God thing that just has the, the right to go around. And so I feel like, <laughs> and, and then I, if you apply that theme to a lot of things, like the way you see stuff, it's almost like, oh, like the way that the people see Morgana is the way that Kale sees Morgana or that Kale, Morgana sees Kale and all this kind of stuff. So it's interesting to play with like, what perspective are we viewing these characters and like, how do they view themselves? Which I think is pretty cool that that was incorporated into their design. Yeah. Sure, yeah. I'd like to, frankly, I'd like to see that idea get more play, you know, like mm -hmm. carried through more. Cause I think that could be a really cool way of like, you know, someone goes and sees Morgana in her little cave, and she doesn't look at all like how she's depicted, but, you know, we could see her perspective seeing that in herself or something like that. That could be really cool. Yeah. I'm curious, had you played her much before or after the rework? Like, was your experience mostly like, oh, post it was when she got all Oh, it was all after the rework, all after the rework. Sure. Yeah, I've only been playing mm -hmm. League for, like, two years. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, yeah, no, I was just curious. I feel like the old so lore definitely coincides more with my initial assumption so i feel like mm -hmm. that's something that i appreciate too they did did a super stereotypical thing in the beginning where yeah she was definitely more of the witchy vibes and morgana in the arthur lore was also a, a witch and whatnot and then there's that and blah 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 so it was kind of more direct copying from that kind of vibe but then now it's kind of like this morally gray emotionally deep like it's it's the story itself, if you think about it, is super tragic and emotional. I just feel like it, it, it could use more content to make it that. But I appreciate that they decided to go a completely different direction with the characters as individuals. Um, because we've had a lot of the good guys, gold and shiny, and the bad guys, <laughs> dark and purple. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, when you think about the concept of justice, it is something that is often very morally gray. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, it very is subjective. It is extremely <laughs> subjective. So yeah, getting these two, the two really different ideas of justice, yeah. Yeah. It's interesting and, and seeing like how. Morgana, like, yeah. Um, yeah, Morgana, like, like, like the scene where she like gets rid of her sword i don't know i feel the whole thing is so emotional because you're like there it mm -hmm. is balanced and what i think i liked about the lore is that in the beginning it's like talking about how um 
the two sides are kind of balanced. So, like, when they were together, like, Morgana kind of didn't like the role as much, but she kept everything in balance. But then when Morgana, like, forsake her sword and went off and did her thing, then there was now this imbalance where the one side of justice that's not always the most helpful has, like, all the power and, like... And um, it's just this... It's, it's an interesting concept. I don't know. It's kind of tragic in a way because you're like, no, we need the yin and yang. We can't just have one side being, like, way too much... <laughs> Especially not that side. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so of uh, of all the skin lines, what do you think is your favorite AU? Oh, man. Um, the one skin <laughs> that I was the most excited to get is the Dawn, is Dawnbringer Morgana. I don't know. I don't remember mm. which AU that one's in, but that one has my whole heart. Like, she, it's so beautiful. <laughs> and, like, the white hair, like, the crystallized looking claw thing the outfit like it's so good like she's i just love the different colors and stuff that they play with all of her skins and whatnot um but i have found that as far as in-game play the coven morgana skin they have a ton of detail that went into that one and that one has been one of my favorite ones to play surprisingly enough mm. I, I love that one i don't think also, I there's that more one. I, I normally yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, there's, there's usually a good way more lore. That one. Yeah. Yeah, I like the splash a lot on the uh, the Coven one. It's very striking. It's intimidating. Do any of the told... do it? <laughs> yes. Do any of the skins <laughs> the like? Because I know some sometimes skins like it feels like like the the hook is a little longer. Like are any of the ones where it's like ooh the binding is just a little bit bigger or a little easier to hit <laughs> or anything like that? Yeah. I feel like the Coven Morgana <laughs> one, for some whatever reason, sometimes I play better with it, and I'm convinced. I'm like, whatever it is about the color or the way they animate it, it just makes more sense in my mind. But I also told my Maybe. mom, like, listen, mom, I spend money on this game because it's my job to intimidate the heck out of the other team with whatever skin I'm using <laughs> before I even get there. That's the idea. It's a psychological game. And the Coven Morgana <laughs> skin, it does a pretty good job of that one. Mm, yeah, I can sure. see that. It's funny because when I feel like I'm t playing a champion, especially if I don't know how to play them, the last thing I want is like a good skin or anything <laughs> like that. It makes me feel like, uh oh, they're, <laughs> they're gonna rip, they're gonna flame me hardcore if I play this this uh, this champion. Like, yeah, shit. it is funny when we have like unlocked like really old skins from working at Riot. <laughs> like people would really want. I'm like, oh, I know I have this really rare Twitch skin. I still don't know how to play Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Everyone's slamming their yeah. keyboard like hell. <laughs> Mark and I have our championship rise skin oh, from yeah. the tournament. It makes me want to become can, a rise. That we can maybe. officially never use, otherwise people will think we're good. <laughs> <laughs> That's dope though. <sighs> Alright. So uh yeah, I guess we'll we'll start at the top here for, for AUs. Um so how uh how would you would you like to go over the uh the the AU lore, or did you want to go over Morgana's skin lore in the AUs, or uh, how do you how would you prefer to to play this? Um, I like how you guys usually do it, where you just read off of it, and then you guys just talk about the, well, chat. the skin lore, and sure. we give our opinions about how they animated it and whether it could have been better or worse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I guess we'll start then with Steel Valkyries, a galaxy scarred by war, now attempts to rebuild, but the old wounds remain. Criminals, bounty hunters, mercenaries, and assassins have filled the power vacuum, piloting dangerous combat exosuits with godlike abilities. This is Blade Mistress Morgana. <laughs> I was trying to figure out which one it yeah. was. <laughs> She's going to have a few of them that I'm going to read the uh, universe lore, and it's probably not going to be obvious which skin <laughs> belongs in it. Cool, cool. Um, Morgana is a deadly combatant and former pilot of the X-09 Zabalba combat exosuit, as well as one of the last half-aliens alive in the galaxy. She has surgically hidden her suit's forbidden, lost technologies beneath her skin, her goal being to Ew. evade her sister, the mad military Justicar, Kale. Mm. Mm. I like her hair in this one. I don't think you see this one very much. I think this was a clever way of hinting at all the her like original splash art stuff like, <laughs> to to this because the whole thing is like the other one was like oh she's like half a she's like this winged creature which is like rare like Kayla's which I don't do they ever establish why the heck they got wings and literally no one else I don't think they do um, 
but and then in this no, one it's I'm... kind of like oh the last of this creature but also instead of oh i hate myself i'm binding my wings it's just oh i'm hiding from kale i'm gonna hide my wings or the thing that makes <laughs> me fly inside of my own flesh which is hardcore right be, yeah <laughs> fucking metal as hell <laughs> although i don't understand like, calm down the blade mistress doesn't does she have like like a thing like her are her nails like particularly long in that one i feel they like, are yeah like, i feel yeah. like there are multiple things where like she has something going on with her hand and i get that she does <laughs> magic and stuff but there's not really an in-game reason why her hand has to be super pointed out yeah <laughs> it's, it's gotta be for splash purposes right because they love yeah. her her reaching i'm like reaching towards the actual laptop camera yeah <laughs> her, like shooting out a hand. little dark binding Right, like they love that, She's so it's like, oh, it's it very does. dramatic. It often looks a... like she has bugles on her fingertips. <laughs> a little bit. Like, like to do. Oh. Snack time, Never a bad time for a snack. <laughs> snack time, Morgana, please. Uh, oh. Sinful snack. Room for bugles. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, we have Albion. The great Elven empires were shattered into remnants long ago. Yet the elves remain. Blackthorn? It is Blackthorn, yeah. Oh, okay. Blackthorn Morgana. I like this skin. The dark forest elves are the shattered remnants of the great elven empires, jealously guarding evil power that some once considered the cornerstone of their magical supremacy. Morgana has hidden this magic deep within her body. Oh, God. (laughs) Chaining it to her soul so that only she may wield it. Okay, so this isn't on her flesh. It's chained to her soul. Yeah. It's totally different. That's a much uh, different procedure, I imagine, at least. (laughs) There's not many people that can do that one anymore. (laughs) They'll never think to find this here. Right. (laughs) It's in the computer. Wow. John just quoting fucking Zoolander up in here. (laughs) You're welcome. I say that like we didn't just watch it. I watched it with Mark and Sarah when I was over there once, like two months ago. <laughs> it was quite entertaining. It was great. Yeah, yeah, I this like, one's fine. Um, <laughs> I feel like I like the old in game of this one. I mean, it's been yes, a minute. They dulled it a lot. They do that sometimes, where like they'll they'll make the, they'll improve the animations, but they're not improved at all. They're just like there's less. Yeah. To them. I think it's hard too because like her her model changed to a degree and like when you look at the old one a large chunk of it was she used to have more like a I don't know what did you say like a, a the skirt bottom kind of pulled around her kind yeah. of she had a wider base and so they used a lot yeah. of that real estate for like roots and stuff which I think is really cool imagery and now yeah. she's more humanoid I guess so there's it's lost a lot of that well I had to show some thigh you know yeah yeah you know so, yeah you gotta get that tum <laughs> tum <laughs> I mostly the wings use this too one also I, yeah like the old one when i'm looking i'm looking at it now it's like a lot more detail in the the no, leaves maybe it was too one. busy but there's mm. gotta be a middle ground right right please have you seen iron inquisitor kale like i feel like no they they, they should always go with more detail why less oh okay yeah i remember this old one i now. mean i think when you look at like old league champions like a lot of the like old models i think that's when like like old maokai maybe for an example like sometimes it is too detailed where they get kind of like it's mm. too busy and it gets lost but yeah. i don't think that was the case for this old one i mean i could be wrong it's been a, a, a minute since i played morgana <laughs> let alone this old skin that you can't even see in game but I'm, when I'm looking way, at it on google it looks better <laughs> i was um making fun of morgana's skirt that's her old splash the skirt that i was making fun oh, of. oh yeah i meant to mention that I forgot that they changed it. Like, I mean, that yeah. that was oh, her yeah, old yeah. one. If you look up Morgana Splash, there is one where her skirt just, is very spotless. far below her belly button. <laughs> it, it is funny, that old one especially. It's really funny, yeah. <laughs> yeah I like, forgot that that's the old like one, because this was an updated one. Yeah. 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 Like, the exiled Morgana one is still giving that kind of vibe. Oh, is it? I'll have to yeah. see it. I, I would bet. I bet you I that's, that's one of those really old ones. And being like, oh my gosh, it's so low quality, and I just don't, I can't, I don't know how any female could fight in that outfit, so I just can't condone <laughs> oh, it in game. Yeah. I'd be curious. I don't even know that's what that like looks like That's like the classic now. 
armor that gets made fun of like when people make fun of like that fantasy female armor right. this, it's this right here yeah. although that would provide max it's defense like in the game Princess this would Leia this is like level like yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. all right all right so we got fables up next set in a mythological world each champion represents a mythological god hero villain or creature okay ghost bride that is ghost bride oh. mm. Legends speak of the weeping bride who searches for her lost husband along the riverbank and takes revenge upon the living for their happiness. Parents sternly warn their children to beware this ghost bride, for those who go with her are never seen again. Oh, is this Plot like a she had La an arranged Llorona marriage to a Mumu? Yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that would be great. He's like looking in through the like the, the, the stained glass and the splash oh. like in his little tuxedo. Oh, <laughs> oh man. That left at the altar of Moo Moo. No! <laughs> no. We have like to follow it. that he was a yordle, Jilted though, a and not a little boy. Yeah. Jilted, yeah. Jilted a Moo Moo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but man. yeah, this is, uh, this is a La Lorna uh, okay. skin. Interesting. Hmm. This was actually, I think, the... Um, which one was it? The Latin America... Oh, skin release. Oh. Yeah, I bet. I bet it was and when they did the Latam. Um, that's why we. Uh, you know, that's why we actually have that statue upstairs of mm. Ghost Bride Morgana. You know, uh, I'm happy for her. I helped set one, up their She's always wanted to just end. be dead. She's not all. She doesn't like the. Mor- <laughs> she wishes she was mortal. Like she's finally achieved that thing that she always wanted. You know, like. <laughs> death she still doesn't seem Although, happy but i was, yeah, I was gonna I say it wasn't it's all it chalked to... up to be but she still did it you know <laughs> but but like what a slap in the face you're like all right i'm mortal i can finally die and then you die and you become a ghost and you're like oh god damn it <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a genuine like issue I yeah. guess, in your yeah. though, right <laughs> uh. hmm well, she's just salty uh, at Kindred up. for never giving her a shot. She's like, really, right. what's it got to take? <laughs> Ooh, I'm running. Ooh, <laughs> oh, no, no, come no, get don't me. Don't get me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. We got uh, Immortal Journey up next. Long ago in an ancient land, many souls gathered beneath the gods to test the limits of their power. Foolish and arrogant, brave and just, their journeys are written into the immortal pages of history. This one is Majestic Empress Morgana, I... a feared sorceress queen. Oh, go ahead. No, I, I, I like, I kind of think this one is super pretty. I'm sorry to interrupt. It's very pretty, although her wings are coming out of her butt. <laughs> Please, she's a peacock. <laughs> I love it. I, she's like a peacock, oh, though. That's why I thought it was yeah. cool, because she didn't have to be an animal. But one of my favorite animals is the peacock, though, which is also super validation that she's literally the character made for me. So, like, she's an <laughs> evil peacock. Please, it doesn't get much better than that. <laughs> See, you saw pig peacock when she said the wings are coming out of the butt, and my first thought was tails. From, from Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking nerd. <laughs> oh, I just thought it looked like wings, a bird that's kind of. how he flies. Kind of like got stuck up her ass is what it looks like. Well, peacock is like a flightless it. bird thing, you know? So, like, that's why she's happy. She's like, this is where I want to be, you know? Hmm. <laughs> I do think it's interesting that the, because I don't ever see this in game, um, but that her, her cue does have the little peacock eye thing. Yeah. Uh, the, that's a neat detail. Frankly, I wish Can they did we get more of I'd like more flightless bird Morganas, please. Like yeah, Kiwi please. Morgana. Penguin. Yes. Penguin or Morgana. Like, give her give her like a legendary skin thing where like you can choose which flightless bird you want her to be type of thing. <gasps> That's okay, fantastic. Like, that, actually. like elementalist Lux, but yeah. it's just flightless bird. <laughs> like, different birds. Emo, but you- more gostrich. <laughs> more go- more gostrich. Out of here. <laughs> Fucking stop. <laughs> Hire him, Riot. <laughs> Uh, anyway, but I didn't really notice the peacock thing as much until um, Wild Rift was promoting uh, that skin uh. because they had okay when they were promoting Morgana and Kale on Wild Rift, they had the most beautiful animations. I fell in love with them all over again. Like Morgana was a thousand percent the hottest thing to hit Rune Terra. Like <laughs> it, they just make it the, the like the way she moves and the visuals that just so gorgeous. I loved it, and then I was like, wait a second, she's a peacock. I gotta look this up and. Now I'm <laughs> <laughs> this isn't 
is this a Wild Rift exclusive skin? No. No. Okay, no. no. Okay. It just, the, the the angle that the character is at when you choose them is different. So you see them in right, different right. detail. Well, this, gotcha. uh, this lore says a, a feared sorceress queen from the heavenly kingdoms, Morgana looked on with disdain as Aurelia sealed away the power of a dragon. Crushing her in combat, Morgana soon realized the young demigoddess had hidden that power away and now ruthlessly searches for a way to return it to its rightful owner. She's a do-gooder. Whoa. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Whoa. She's still super emo, <laughs> though. That seems like a very... <laughs> How... mm -hmm. yeah. you, you can take the you can take the eyeshadow off of the Morgana, but you can't take... <laughs> <laughs> Morgana out from under the eyeshadow, I guess. <laughs> All right, next up we got Coven. Long yeah. ago, an order of monastic knights slew the vile gods of the old world using esoteric powers granted by the moon and sun. Now the world has grown dark and violent as those selfsame deities prepare their return, challenged only by the light of the eclipse. And this one, unsurprisingly, Coven Morgana. <laughs> Queen of the Coven and patron of that called Ashen Owl, Morgana worshipped the old gods and wept when they were slain, betrayed when her sister murdered the primordial sun and delivered its power to an army of witch knights. Now Morgana has returned to end the reign of mankind, returning the world's true lords to their rightful moldering thrones. Mm. See, this is some spicy politics. Spicy politics, oh, yeah. <laughs> <AU>. <laughs> yes. them, them old gods and shit. I like the, worst, well, the, I the use of the word moldering. Yes. And like, oh gosh, it's just it's just so cool. I love all the different coven skins. And what's crazy is so many of them kind of have similar vibes, but I'm not mad about it. Like they all look super <laughs> cool and they're dope. And I like how they're kind of tied to an animal. Like Morgana's is the owl. So then if you like look at her splash art, she like that half thing growing out of her face is like an owl type of thing. And then when she does her backing animation in Coven Morgana, she like there's like a uh, one of those perch things, you know, they have in those stereotypical like university movies. There's like the bird perch and then the bird sits on there and the library and whatnot. <laughs> it's like one of those. And then it's the owl. And I think she either turns into an owl or something like that. And she like flies away and goes around it. Oh, I don't really? know. It's just, it's very detailed and it's super cool. Like for an owl, for no reason. And then they just decided to be like, yeah, we're going to go ham with like this theme here. <laughs> it makes me curious. I'm not like, I know we've gone through some other coven skins but i don't remember like some of those animal details i would like to see I them all like in game because i'm it's a neat thematic yeah. to carry through i think lasandra's is like the stag or something like that because she's got the antler thing going on because you know lasandra and her head stuff but that, <laughs> like i i don't know i, th I thought i thought it was pretty dope i like it i'm also a big oh, yeah, yeah. person so anytime morgana is intertwined with a bird you know i'm paying money dropping dropping <laughs> rp on that which one a is big Zyra? bird person sesame street <laughs> No. Okay. <laughs> Big Bird <laughs> Morgana. <laughs> Big Bird Kale, please, more likely. <laughs> I do not know what animal she All is. All right. So, uh which which person were you wondering about? Zyra. Uh, Zyra. She's the night dove. Oh, she's a dove? She's yeah. a dove. So, she's okay. a plant. The 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 animals here for the record. <laughs> Make it makes sense. And <laughs> and they don't always align to what you think they would. Uh Ari is the half light jackal. Sure. Ash is sense. the jet black ibex. Camille is the ebony ram. Cassiopeia is the silver cobra. Uh, Evelyn is the great harrier. LeBlanc is the black crane. Lysandra, ivory stag. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, Morgana owl, Zyra dove. It was like they cool were mostly doing birds. Yeah. All right. <laughs> That's actually pretty cool, and like I said, it makes me curious to look at like back animations and stuff for for some of these other ones. I, I don't, I'm, maybe they don't have them in all of them, but it'd be I want nice like if a they did. super dark show thing to be made out of the Coven AU, just like a really dark, scandalous, <laughs> politically weird, just really off type of situation. That would be so fun, right? Yeah, which nice dark fantasy kind of situation, of True yeah. Blood, but with Ooh. the Coven AU. Nice. I'd watch that. I'm trying to think of something, but I, I got nothing. My brain fizzled. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up, we got Chaos in Order. 
two forces collide once more. The lion demands an eternal reign. The wolf hungers for endless war. Power lies wherever war lives, but only one can claim it. Choose your god king. And this one, your favesies. Dawnbringer <laughs> Morgana. Hey! Determined. <laughs> <laughs> Determined to see order triumph over chaos, Morgana has sacrificed much to tip the scales in favor of light. If Dawn emerges victorious, she is certain that they can avoid the gods' destruction and usher in a new age, one free from the corruption of chaos. Perhaps then Yone will see balance for the delusion that it is. They gotta at Yone like that just randomly at the end. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like that fucking call out. Well, it feels like she's... It, this feels like... Like, the... The anti, like the opposite of the void situation. Like she's like anti chaos and all about order. Like this could just be normal mm. Morgana in the void of it. <laughs> That's true. I do find it interesting. I mean, it feels almost more like. I was gonna say it feels almost more a little more antithetical to like her, uh, her mainline stuff. Just like the idea of her like being very into God King Garen from what I remember going on in this situation, right? Like, she's a... I assume she's Ra Ra Garen. You know, Garen. Garen seems, Stan. Yeah, Ra-Ra you're right. Garen. <laughs> you know, this seems to bring her back to almost like a place a little more like Kale, which I like. I like it being a, a nice kind of shift away from... Like, it's not just, more, you know, Morgana in Fire Realm, or, which they sometimes yeah. are, you know? Or, like, playing with like the personality in, more. Yeah, yeah. I feel like in her original stuff, she's like this underappreciated personality that's just kind of self-loathing and quiet and dark and to her own thing and some know about her blah 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 and then in all of her AUs it feels like she's the queen she's been put in charge right? she knows what to do <laughs> she's got emotions involved she's powerful sexy you name it like all this kind of stuff and it's like I do appreciate it but it's just kind of funny that it seems that she's always in charge yeah sure. certified yeah. badass in all of them <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, next up, we got Harrowing, which are their Halloween skin lines. Yeah, I love this one. And this one has a regular skin and a prestige one. So first up, Bewitching Morgana. Ultimately, trick-or-treating is less about dark magic and occult superstition and more about finding a witch costume that actually fits. Have <laughs> you seen those sizes? Who is this stuff even made for? Oh, well, they made her so fucking stacked in this skin. <laughs> she can't find anything that fits her. Bro. Dude, then, this bewitching Morgana is canon, though, because everybody in, the, in canon lore just thinks she's a witch. Like That's true. <laughs> You're not wrong. She's got those potions and shit on her wall. I know. Mm-hmm. Every time you go, when you guys were going over the stories, I was just picturing bewitching Morgana the whole time. I'm like, that's literally just bewitching Morgana. <laughs> makes her a little less intimidating now that I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the why she has showed to be up super and she was... intimidating on all the other ones. <laughs> yeah. And then Prestige Bewitching Morgana. Literal magic wasn't necessary for Morgana to nab top prize in the holiday costume contest, but that didn't stop her from casting a figurative spell on the judges with her enchanting ensemble. So she's This is a party her. they won't soon forget. He <laughs> says figurative, right? does say figurative. Okay. Fig- figurative. <laughs> figurative. Figurative. Figure. 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 figure the best part of this skin is the little kitty cat with the mm-hmm. cauldron. Oh. Playing with the cauldron. Now, there's a few cool little things baby. about this. Uh, I feel like, canonically, this skin line is tied to Dark Star. Oh. Oh, really? I think uh here let me let me double check Ugh. real quick and make sure that I'm thinking of the right one. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's in terms of splash details, I do I'm like her of. having the frog in her hand. Very yeah. Nice. It's a good one. She used to have nothing. Normally she would just have nothing, uh, but it's nice to give her like you know, again, weird witch. Uh, does the prestige right? skin have her like voice lines? Are they changed at all? Because I know in the Coven one, like they did a thing to her voice where it actually sounds different. Like it sounds oh, really? super oh, I don't know. And evil. I've never played a prestige skin, I don't think. I know, okay. me neither. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Interesting. But you know, you know the frog that you mentioned, Mark? Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Oh, oh. It's her. <laughs> That's really uh, Velcos. Jilted her. <laughs> Turned her in the uh, It's a move. Oh, is this? Oh, go uh, ahead. <laughs> so, Darkstar Thresh, when he does his backing animation, um, a little, a little frog pops out. 
and uh, he summons a dark hole behind himself, and the frog gets sucked into the dark hole. Uh, bewitching Morgana's backing animation, uh, a little portal pops up behind her, and a frog pops out of it. <gasps> really? And then she oh, and then she picks so... up the frog and throws it into the that's, cauldron. <laughs> that's pretty fucking good. Yeah. <laughs> Do more of that shit, Riot. I like that. Oh, man, yeah. Don't even tell us. Just make us have to find it. Do a lot of them, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, given the two lore blurbs for this skin, I feel like it, it made it much more seem like she was dressing like a witch or something like that. Mm. But also canonically, uh, Bewitching Morgana and Bewitching Tristana worked together to summon Little Devil Timo. Oh, who then turned Tristana into a demon? Oh wow! So I mean, they got some real shit going on there. <laughs> <laughs> I want. Oh, I need, Neat. bro. I want a cinematic on that. That would be a fun little cinematic. Yeah, honestly, I would love. I would love it. God, I would love a new harrowing cinematic and use some of like some old skins, show off some of the new skins, do it great. right. I like that. Yeah. Like a fun harrowing cinematic, not like yes, another like. Yeah. Sentinels type thing. <laughs> I'm tired of that black mist. I want the fun harrowing. Yeah. I want the I want the trick or treating harrowing. Where's that one? <laughs> uh, yeah, honestly. All right. Next up, we got Wode Tribe, set in an alternate Freljord. It features champions as members of the Wode Tribe. This one's exiled Morgana. A battle spirit, exiled from her tribe in a past age, Morgana has silently plotted revenge on her betrayers and their descendants for hundreds of years. Each passing winter, she comes closer to her goal, a climactic battle in which the tribe falls, and Kale with it. Uh, she must run okay. hot, then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this was one of those ones where yes. I had no idea which fucking skin you were about to say. Yeah. <laughs> You could have said bewitching could have Morgana again, and I would have believed you. <laughs> I wish. Listen, I I love the f the fact that they did like she has the matching skill with Kale though, and it's the matching splash art. Like, why don't they do more matching Kale Morgana stuff? Like that would be yeah. super dope. So yeah, well, we didn't mention it, but yeah, fun fact about that skin: they don't share a splash technically, but if you put mm. the Viridian Kale splash and the um, the the woad. I mean, already. they're together here. Oh, the exile old one. splash. The, yeah, we're waiting for a judge's decision. <laughs> Hold on, let me let me. Let me let I do check. see it. I I mean, I see a splared a splared shared splash, but it's not for. Really oh, sorry, sorry. I was um, thinking of. Uh, I forgot to mention it. Uh, I I was thinking of Blackthorn Morgana. Oh, so, okay. oh okay. Kale Black in black form. So Viridian Kale oh. and Blackthorn Morgana, they don't share a splash, mm. but if you put their two splashes next to each other, they are the same splash. Hmm. Oh, nice. yeah, you're totally right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Yeah, my bad, my bad. I forgot okay. to. I up. <laughs> I yeah, I do agree. Up. I like them sharing, a, having them in more shared AUs. You know, because it's, it, maybe it's like you said, uh, Rebecca, it might be a good chance that a lot of people don't even catch that relationship so yeah. the more you kind of like hey there's a reason they're constantly sharing skins you know keep people in uh off topic but the way that your camera fell and you were just like poking over it made it feel like i was in a box and you were like looking over the edge of the box <laughs> i'm sorry i had to take somebody trying to call me i'm like i'm in a recording right now i've been waiting months for this <laughs> <laughs> Now we got Lunar Revel, set around the mythos and festival festivals of Ionia's Lunar Revel. And festivals! Festival. It's the best of us <laughs> for the rest of us. And real world Asian Lunar New Year. All of the champion skins were inspired by these regional cultures, um, and it encompasses three themes. General, Firecracker, Mecha Kingdoms, and Warring Kingdoms. Just four theme. I feel like I said three. I meant four. It's okay. Um, I forgive you. This one is Lunar Wraith Morgana. Morgana is a dark spirit who appears during Lunar Revel, a famed seducer of mortals, monsters, and gods alike. Legends say she ensnares the hearts and minds of her victims before dragging their souls away to an unspeakable purgatory, never to be heard from again. 
She's like an actual bad guy in this one. Shit. Oh, yeah. And she's got a, there's a short story and a little cinematic to go with this. The uh, short story is called Lunar Guardian, where we basically just learn of a traveler who fought against two evil queens who were spreading darkness to the land, and he defeated them and brought people to light. Oh. And in the cinematic, Unite Against the Darkness, uh, Nasus and Warwick were sent to protect Lux, um, but it got bored or something. In the, <laughs> until darkness came in the form of Caitlyn and Morgana, which reignited their fervor, and they fought back the darkness. I'm attacking the darkness. <laughs> Ayo, hey, I've played against Lux in lane as Morgana. She does not need Nasus to help her. <laughs> I will just put that out there. Totally fine on her own. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I don't see this one very much in game. Mm. Yeah. I've never yeah. played it. I, I play that Caitlyn skin sometimes. Yeah. yeah, the Caitlyn skin I've done before. But, um, yeah. Hmm. 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 And next up fan favorite world championship this is victorious morgana a queen of shadows victorious morgana glides through summoner's rift in deep blue armor and a flashy recall that's it yeah that's her cat i mean they don't really get a lot of cat looks i'm so mad i can't have it i love the eye makeup on it so much yeah i like the um is that Victorious El- Elise in the the background on the the stained glass? Is that what I'm? That's the word I'm looking for. Right. That looks a lot oh. like the Victorious Elise splash. Right. Maybe. Yeah. I Am thought I it was going to be something dumb, like there was a spider in the background. <laughs> oh no! Come on. With a <laughs> crown on. Stoop to such... <laughs> I think it might be. I thought it was. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it would make sense. Sure. What season was this for? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, because there's Victorious Janna in there too. So yeah, it must yeah. Be. Mm-hmm. This must have been like f- five or something after a few of the other ones. Right. Oh, I'm it still sad I don't get those skins for TFT ranking. <laughs> look, if we have to suffer, you have to suffer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Finally, last but not least. Culinary Masters. (laughs) Set in a cooking show environment, all of the champions are chefs of various skill levels. And this one is Sinful Succulence Morgana. She is the original sugary sin, the dark diva of confectionery cunning, (laughs) the fallen angel of fantastic flavor. Her terrifying treats will trap you in your seats. Let's give a Culinary (laughs) Masters welcome to Morgana. Ayo, that was so beautifully say. written. I'm just going to put that on my Instagram bio, like the original sugary <laughs> sin or whatever that is. Just leave it at that. Yeah, this is, a, this is a fun one. There's some context behind the skin, too, that when during the rework, Rayla Hyde specifically made a point of mentioning, like, hey, there's some... Here's the reason she's so mad. <laughs> <laughs> uh um, so Kale exists in this universe too as a far more successful baker Aww. than her twin sister. Uh, sinful succulents Morgana could be baking cookies, but they burn to ash, and she remembers how her twin stole that darn baking competition trophy from her year <laughs> last year, even though it belongs to her. She had spent hours making perfectly formed fondant frosting, and then the burnt cookies come to life, and one of them runs away, and it's just out of reach if she could just grab it. That's when she would secretly feel all her rage and fly and take a bite out of that cookie's face. <laughs> That's why there's a little cookie running away from her. It is splash. cute. Yeah. Mm, I remember yeah. reading that on Reddit and being like, dang, that answered every question I ever wanted to ask about this. <laughs> uh, I also, I, I forgot I included a picture here for you, hun. Oh. When they had the old Journal of Justice article about Morgana. Um they had this picture to go along with oh. it for her sinful succulents uh a very a very different version old sinful succulents Even like they should drop. her ears are so huge yeah they're very elf yeah. ears well we'll post these pictures on twitter so that this isn't you know yes i, I we mean, know that us looking at pictures isn't great <laughs> podcast material <laughs> like wow hey listeners let's just look at this 
<laughs> Trust me, you you fucking it's love a little it. Long it's great. Episode. <laughs> I mean, the sinful succulent Morgana skin. I mean, the splash is fantastic, but the one right before it, I don't know why, but it has my whole heart. I think because it just it doesn't look like there's anything else going on. She just burnt the cookies and she's fucking pissed about it, and it's fantastic. <laughs> oh, it's a big the way they animated the eyes movie. and the shoulder, like yeah. the emotion yeah. and rage, and she still got the mitts on. She's like just on the peak of realizing how <laughs> mad she is about this yeah, yeah. the old one awesome. she's got like the tray in her hand and she's going like this oh. like oh. trying to be pretty. like how could this happen to me no like she's like how god why for me it's We've the fucking thought. it's the mess that's around it's yes like the, that yeah. too yeah. In the old splash art, she, there's just like a disaster in the kitchen. Like she did not know what she was doing, but she was trying her best. Right, well, or not even one. like you don't know what you're doing, but just like you're just you're just. You, there's no time to pick up. There's no time to clean up. I got to make these fucking <laughs> cookies right, and they come out all fucked up. Yeah, uh, <laughs> oh, it, it, was, it was for sure like a last thread. Uh, yeah. skin that we're seeing. We just saw somebody break that last thread. Yeah, you, you know when you're having a day and you accidentally drop something and you cry? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like that. We'll call that visual storytelling, folks. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that is that is it for AUs. Uh, before I move on to fun facts, uh, I wanted to give you a chance to make any shout-outs that you wanted. I know you have a, uh, a podcast. Uh, I do. Give, a, give us a little pitch. Where can people find it? Okay, so you can find me at Snow Tigris, S-N-O-W-T-I-G-R-I-S, and any social media. I'm always that everywhere. Um, and our podcast is Pages from Diary of Milan. Me and my friend Maggie um, talk about our lives, and it's funny, and sometimes we try to give good relationship advice if we're not too busy complaining <laughs> about our lives. Um, we actually did a series where we went through this arcane series so if you actually want something league related we did do that we went through it episode by episode um and the first season was all just about friendship but yeah no have a fun time on there uh but that's pretty much it for me i'm also in the discord just as snow tigers so if you ever want to chat or reach out i love to talk to people yeah. nice well Dope. thank you so much for joining us today yeah, yeah thank you thank you guys so much this is so fun <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it. It was great to have you. <laughs> All right. I am going to head out here, though, because I have to leave. But you guys enjoy the fun facts. Yeah. I'll hear it when the Morgana episode comes out. <laughs> okay. So, oh, there'll be, there'll be surprises. Have fun. Okay. <laughs> bye. I'm swearing. Bye. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm starving. I'm, like, about to pass out. Don't worry. It's just a few. Okay. All right. Fun facts mm-hmm. for Morgana. Uh, Morgana and Coven Morgana are voiced by Erica Lindbeck, who also voices Talia and Zoe. Zoe? Zoe. Zoe. <laughs> Zobo? Zobo. <laughs> Zozo Zo, Mago. That's cool, though. Zoe is such a very different one. Yeah, yeah I was going to say. Oh. Um, yeah, it's very, there's two different sides of that coin. <laughs> uh, old Morgana was voiced by Rebecca Schweitzer. Not who me. That's also not me. voices Prework Siver. <laughs> That's not you. No. That's true. Fun fun fact number three, that is not Rebecca. There are more than one person named Rebecca. Um, her dance is a reference to Exit's song, Up and Down, which I had not heard of, but mm. you can look it up. True facts. Google. Uh, Morgana and Kale are the children of the aspect of justice, specifically because Riot wanted to explore the idea of children of aspects, which I feel like they should do a little bit more. Yeah. These two. <laughs> it's a good yeah. premise. There's more material there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and they moved away narratively from Kale and Morgana being a race of angels just because angels have certain cultural connotations that would have been harder to expand upon as they move the story forward. Yeah, that's a good call. Mm. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, Riot decided to only partially update Morgana's kit during her visual gameplay update due to her having a timeless kit that was consistently healthy throughout the years, which doesn't happen mm, Timeless. Often. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I agree. I love her kit. Don't get me wrong. It's just funny that they... It's an interesting <laughs> word choice, right? It's timeless. <laughs> um, it's classic. Perfect. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, her parents were from one of the tribes on Mount Targon, an earlier version of the Rakor. I say earlier because she was born over 1,000 years ago, at the height of the Rune War. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as we mentioned, they were the first pair of siblings. There are six more pairs, not counting the Orn, Volley, and Ivia trio. At first, I thought you meant like that their her parents <laughs> had, that they had like six more sets. Oh. Of, <laughs> it took me a minute, sorry. Oh. No, they're just, yeah, no, yeah, um, yeah. six other pairs of siblings within League lore, not yeah. birthed from. That poor lady. <laughs> <The> poor... <laughs> uh, Morgana and Kale currently have less celestial power than other aspects due to being the children of an aspect, but they have more free will and more unified identity. Uh, Morgana's magic is a combination of earth magic, spirit magic, and the opposite of heavenly light or dark light. Uh, Morgana's black shield and Kale's divine judgment come from the same source but are interpreted in different ways due to their opposing viewpoints mm. uh, Morgana's worst flaw is her inability to let go of past mistakes and her best quality the empathy she feels for all sinners regardless of their crime and her favorite ice cream flavor I was really <laughs> looking for it they don't have right? it <laughs> what's the blood type come on <laughs> uh, uh, most Amasians don't necessarily know that the winged protectors were female. and Oh, that's, they wouldn't. They suck. Yeah. And suspecting that the veiled lady might even be one of the protectors is would likely be considered heresy. Ew. Sure. Um, Morgana's left hand appears to be more dominant. She starts <laughs> basic attacks with her left. Uh, throws dark bindings with her left and uses her left to cast tormented soil mm. compared to Kale, who is right handed. Mm. So mm. she's left blade handed mm. or blade armed. <laughs> What's it that we said? <laughs> uh, the bugles go on the left hand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dark bindings debuff reads This unit is unable to move, lasts for roughly three years. Yeah. Hmm. Sure feels like it. Uh,. And um, the last bit, Morgana's old concept art had her wielding a comically large flail, which I also <laughs> have a picture of here that we can post on the Twitter. Ooh, I want to see that. Oh, jeez, yeah. She's like hunched over. She's got like a, th a three She's balled like flail. A combination of Morgana and Mordekaiser there. She really like does the look half. like that. Yeah. I'll have, to, I'll have to check that out. I've not seen that. Yeah. That's pretty good. But yeah, those are my Morgana fun facts. Nice. I hope you enjoyed them and had fun with the facts. <laughs> they were so I, fun. I did, frankly. <laughs> Yay. All right. Any final Morgana thoughts? Mm, I, I mean, I think I think we already talked about it. a lot of the same criticisms almost that I had back in the Kale episode. Just kind of echo. Yeah. They just need. They need mm. more. Need Give more Rayla a book. Morgana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do a do a little short novella. It could be great with these two, or just mm -hmm. something. You know. <laughs> but I think they're going to be sidelined yeah. for a while. Yeah. I think so, too. Yeah. Well, that was Morgana. And with that, we're done with the M's. Oh, we're out nice. of the M's. I know. It's coming along. <laughs> but thank you so much for listening. We have a Twitter. It's at Loreheads. And we're on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Loreheads. We post these on YouTube as well. And John has some parody songs on there. We have a Discord if you want to join and, and chat with some folks, like Snow, like, ugh, like Snow Tigress. <laughs> and John, usually he's on there the most out of all of us, I would say. <laughs> I'm very bad at checking it. Sure. Um, and we have a Patreon. Thank you so much to all of our patrons. But a very special thank you to our Madarda tier patrons. Uh, Chloe Things, Great Scott Nine, King of Hearts, Mylect, Rel, Shupa Moustache, and the Void Event is here! <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Who has the longest name, and I feel like he keeps it that way, specifically <laughs> to screw with me during this portion of the segment. <laughs> but you're welcome to do so. <laughs> Fun fact, if you subscribe and you can make John say anything, he'll say swear words. That's true. <laughs> <He'll> say anything. <laughs> but thank you all for your generosity. It means a lot to us. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if you were being judged and i was morgana i would i would be nice to you and protect you with a dark shield 
Okay. That was a little tamer. I'm just, I'm just bad at it. <laughs> <laughs> if, if Kale was coming to get you. I would run. <laughs> I'd, dark, I'd, 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 I'd black shield you. I'd miss my right. binding. <laughs> <laughs> I would 100% miss the binding. I'd pop ultimate and then dark shield range. myself on X. Dark shield myself, all die within three seconds of the ult going off. <laughs> oh shit, I had zone yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I play Morgana, everybody. <laughs> and join us next week because we're going oh, to talk about one of my faves, the Tide Caller, Nami. <laughs> <laughs>